fun. Like, not only is it a hand grinder, it could also be like a baby toy. Yeah. Kids, kids love to spin the wooden handle. Don't give this to your kids, I'm an idiot. What's up everybody, hope you're doing awesome out there. Thank you so much for coming back to join me for another video. And in this video, we are talking about the Kin Grinder K6. This, the K6, is the top of the line hand grinder that you can get from Kin Grinder. They reached out to me on Instagram, seemed to like what I'm doing with some of the videos here, offered to send me this grinder. So just know that this was a gift from Kin Grinder to me, but they're not paying me for this video. These are my thoughts. I've been using this grinder now for about three weeks. Uh, and to be honest, I actually really like it. It seems like it's made very well. It's got an external adjustment feature on it here, which I really like. Each click to get around, you know, it can make a complete revolution on this is 60 clicks and each one of those clicks is 16 microns. So you've got a pretty good range of adjustment from fine to coarse, and this particular grinder is designed to sort of be an all-around grinder. They say that this grinder is good for espresso, it's good for pour over, it's got a removable handle, obviously, with a lid. I do like that this lid has an O-ring on it, so it seats very well and it seals very nicely to the top of the um, grind chamber. The handle itself is removable from this plastic lid if you want. There's a white O-ring ring on here that you can remove and that makes the handle and the lid separate components. The lid stays on here really nicely. I know there are some complaints with other hand grinders that the lid and the handle and that sort of stuff doesn't always stay attached, especially when you're grinding, which isn't good. I have not had that issue with this. It's all very sturdy, fits in there really nicely, and I've not had an issue with anything coming apart uh, as I've been grinding. And I've been trying to do some kind of like really furious grinding with it to see if I can get that lid to pop out, um, and I couldn't. It stayed in there very nicely. It's got a nice rubber grip around the outside that's built into this. I don't know if it's bonded to this, but I haven't been able to get it to move against the body. So it's very well secured to this and it gives you a nice point of gripping, you know, especially when grinding finer where you need a little bit more energy and have to put a little bit more effort into it. Having the rubber grip around the outside is really nice. As far as the catch cup goes, it's a thread on style. I wish it was magnetic. Uh, that's pretty nice, but at this price point, um, I'm not gonna complain too much about a thread on catch cup. It's pretty coarse thread, so it doesn't take a whole lot to get it on there. Um, obviously, you don't wanna crank it too tight or you could gall up the metal in here and make that stick. The hopper or grind chamber volume on this is 30 to 35 grams is what they have listed. I haven't gone up that high. I think the most I've ground in this at one time was 20 grams and obviously had no issues fitting 20 grams of beans in here. And it grinds pretty quickly. I didn't time it. We can do some of that here in a minute. Um, uh, we can maybe time like a 15 gram dose or something for pour over and see how quickly uh, it grinds. But I haven't had an issue with how long it's taken to grind. Obviously in the finer settings, in the espresso range, it's gonna take longer than it would in the medium to coarse range. That's just, you know, science. The overall weight of the K6 that uh, Kin Grinder has listed on their website is 630 grams. Although I haven't weighed it, maybe we should weigh it. 640.2, liars. So the K6 houses a 48 millimeter heptagonal conical burr set that honestly, I've been enjoying. I've been getting pretty good cups of coffee out of this. The uh, pour overs I've been making with this have been very bright, good sweetness, good body to it. I've played around with this a little bit on espresso. I will say grinding for espresso and a hand grinder is a little bit of a tedious task, but the couple of shots that I did get dialed in and pull with this were pretty tasty. They had nice syrupy body to them, good sweetness, um, good clarity of flavors. Now it's not, extreme clarity. It's not, you know, comparable to something that has like, you know, SSP MP burrs or something like that in it, or, or some more expensive hand grinders, I'm sure that have really good clarity, but it was definitely good enough. And especially at the $99 price tag that this comes in at, um, I'm really, really impressed. And it makes a really good cup of coffee for that price point. So one thing that Kin Grinder has on their website that I thought was really cool outside of just, you know, the full specs and all the details about all the grinders that they make is a sort of grind size comparison chart um, that tells you for each one of their grinders roughly how many clicks is sort of a general 
target grind setting. Now, they're not giving it to you in micron, they're giving it to you in say, you know, by saying like fine or extra fine or medium, but it's a good starting point to be able to help you get dialed in. So for this grinder, extra fine is 15 to 25 clicks, fine is 25 to 60 clicks, medium fine is 60 to 90 clicks, medium is 90 to 120 clicks, and coarse they just have listed at 150 clicks. Like with any other grinder or any other new coffee tool you might be utilizing, it just takes playing with it, making some brews, seeing how they taste, seeing how they draw down, seeing how you like them, and making adjustments fine or coarse from there. So real quick, before we dive in and brew up any coffee with this guy, let's take the Kin Grinder K6 apart so you can get a better look at the internals. So the first thing you wanna do when taking this guy apart is go all the way full coarse so you can't go any coarser. And that will allow you to be able to push up against the spring tension and sort of release this little recessed area where the clip that holds the main shaft into the body resides. All you're gonna do is push that up and then pop this little spring clip out. If it falls down in there, no big deal. Also, it is magnetic, so if you have a little uh, pocket screwdriver like this with a magnet on it, that comes in really handy. There is a little collar that sits underneath that clip, so make sure when this falls out, you don't lose it. And also, the upper bearing comes out fairly easily, so you wanna make sure that if that falls out, you don't lose that either. Basically, once you have those components apart, the shaft comes out. So there is the rotational burr. There is a little spring retainer washer here. And then of course a spring. There is your stationary burr down at the bottom of the grind chamber. You can see here this upper bearing came out when we pulled this assembly apart, but there is another upper bearing and there's also a lower third bearing down here in the bottom of the housing that holds the shaft, which means essentially this has three bearings, uh, you know, in, in a short span, a short distance here, keeping this shaft really stable and straight inside there. I, I noticed right away um, when grinding with this just how stable and how smooth everything felt. If the shaft is wobbling around inside here, the gap between your rotational and stationary burr is gonna be changing as you're grinding, which is gonna give you really inconsistent grind. It was nice to see that this has multiple bearings inside, three bearings that are keeping this shaft nice and stable and straight inside this housing. I'm gonna throw this bad boy back together and we're gonna brew up some coffee. First, we're gonna do the pour over so I don't wreck my taste buds by tasting espresso. And we are going to be doing a 15-250 brew in the Aurea, utilizing this delicious uh, natural Ethiopia from Brandywine Coffee Roasters. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure out 15 grams, and we are gonna do 60 clicks, which is kind of on the medium fine side of um, their recommendation, and kind of see where we're at. So. That is one full revolution at 60 clicks. So I've got 15.2 grams dosed here. I am gonna weigh the catch cup on this and then we're going to uh, weigh the output and just see if we've got any sort of retention. But in my experience with this so far, I haven't really had uh, much of a retention issue with it. One thing I have been doing with this, especially since RDTing and that can cause some beans to stick, is just giving it a little whack and then kind of doing the handle, you know, doing a grind a few more times just to make sure I don't have anything stuck up in the grind chamber that didn't make it down in. This is really smooth. All this is really sturdy, stays together really nicely. The handle is nice and sturdy. I've noticed some, you know, reviews I've watched on other hand grinders. The handles are kind of wobbly. They don't stay attached. Like I mentioned in the beginning, the lid's got a nice O-ring on it um, and the it's also O-ring attached the handle to the lid. So everything is just really nice and sturdy. The knob on the handle spins really freely. I do wish the handle was maybe a little bit smaller. I don't have, you know, super huge hands and this feels a little kind of bulbous in your hand, but at the same time, it does feel like you have a good amount of leverage on it too. So I guess it would just sort of depend on your hand size, but I feel like for 99 bucks, that's kind of a silly complaint that I have. We've got exactly 15 grams out. So there was, looks like 0.1 or maybe 0.2 grams of retention, uh, but that's, damn near nothing. I don't even know if I'd be able to get that out. It's probably just kind of what's left over and stuck in the burrs. Nope. Oh, 15.1, 15.1. We got uh, we got 0.1 of our dose back. <laughs> so I'm gonna be just using my pretty typical 15 250 Oreo recipe that I like to use. This is looking like a pretty good drawdown. So I think our total brew time is gonna be kind of right where I want it, which is probably around two and a half, maybe 245. Okay, so I was a little off target with my uh, total brew time. That ended up actually being three minutes and 37 seconds. Um, and it has a little bit of a muddy look to it, but it's not too bad. So that might've been just a little too fine on the grind, um, but let's taste it and 
see what we got. It smells really good. This coffee has a, a pretty strong peach uh, note to it and like a honeysuckle note as well. So it's kind of got some good florally sweetness and a good sort of, um, you know, stone fruit flavor with that peach. And I can definitely smell the peach in this. It's actually a pretty strong smell of the peach. Little, little bit of the floralness to it. it. Smells good. Definitely getting that stone fruit sort of flavor. Not a ton of clarity, not yet anyways. It may open up a little bit more as it cools. Little tiny bit of astringent, uh, astringency to it and a little dryness and that's probably because of the over extraction because it was a little finer uh, than I had anticipated and so the, the brew time was a little bit longer. But, uh, but it's still not bad. I would probably go up maybe another five to eight, maybe 10 clicks uh, on this and do this brew again and kind of see where it's at. Let's go extreme. Let's go 10 more clicks. So we're at 70 clicks now. I didn't time these grinds. When I'm editing this video, I'll put a timestamp here. I'll watch the video and see how many seconds it takes to grind <laughs> what I've been doing. Okay, this is a uh, much faster drawdown, almost a full minute uh, quicker drawdown, uh, 244. So still got that good peach smell. A little more floral. This coffee also has a strawberry flavor note to it. Um, and I can kind of smell a little bit more of like that strawberry sort of sweetness now in this. Mm. Oh, wow. Wow. Uh, noticeably different. Um, peach flavor is really prominent, uh, but the strawberry flavor is much more noticeable. The honeysuckle sweetness is there, like right on the tip of your tongue. Good sweetness. No astringency at all. No drying to it. The, this is really good. I, I'm, I'm very pleased with this. Now, this isn't the best cup of coffee I've ever made with this particular coffee. Uh, and I'm sure that on a better hand grinder, um, you would get even better results. At least I hope you would. But again, for the money, for 99 bucks, the construction of this, the quality of, you know, what seems to be the quality of the burr that, that's in this, I, I'm really pleased. This is, this is good. Let's pull a shot with it. For our espresso, we're gonna be using the same coffee. We are going to be dosing 18 grams, and I've got the grinder set at 35 clicks, which is about 10 clicks into their fine range. Uh, the fine range was 25 to 60 clicks, so I felt like 35 was probably a good place to start. I did try to pull a shot the other day, and I think I had it set on uh, 20 or 25, and it pretty much stalled the uh, espresso machine. So we'll go with 35. So I know we didn't actually time the grinding of the pour over, but let's let's time the grinding of the uh, espresso dose. So again, 18 grams, pretty fine at uh, 35 clicks. Oh. I hope this isn't too fine. We're getting close. That's 38 seconds right there. And that seems like it's everything. So yeah, 38 seconds. That's pretty good, I guess. I don't know. I guess it depends on <laughs> what you deem to be a good amount of time to hand grind a specific, uh, you know, coarseness or fineness of coffee beans. Um, I mean, to me, 30, you know, 35, 40 seconds to grind 18 grams for espresso doesn't seem all that bad, but you may have different thoughts on that. I think that was pretty good. Hmm, that smells really good. Really good, like strawberry smell in that. Whew. All right, so we got our shot here. This is actually the second shot I pulled. The first shot at 35 clicks was a little too fine and it kind of overran the pressure gauge on the machine. It was hovering around 10 bar for the entire time. So then I went and loosened it to 43 clicks and got this shot, which is a little bit more along the lines of kind of a modern shot, which works pretty well because this is a lighter roasted coffee. But this was 18 grams in, 55 grams out in about 25 seconds, 27 seconds, I think it was something like that. I would probably say around 40 clicks would probably be ideal um, for a coffee like this to get you closer to like a traditional 18 in, 36 out in, you know, 25 to 30 seconds. Ooh, that's really good. Oh, that's really good. This is tasty. Really, really good strawberry note. That peach, like stone fruit note is really good. Good sweetness. Not quite as much texture, not quite as much of a syrupy body, because again, it was a little bit longer, kind of more modern shot. 
Oh, juicy. I got the I got the sides of my jaw juiciness going. This is really tasty. I'm actually preferring this shot with the K6 versus this same coffee pulling a shot using the X54 grinder. And if you didn't see the review I did of the Malconig X54, I'll have a link up here for you so you can check that out. This is interesting. I'm I really like this. For 99 bucks, I'm I'm really shocked. Um, it's very good. I've been getting really good cups of coffee out of it that I really enjoy, and that's what's most important. Definitely check out King Grinder. I'll have a link for them down in the description so you can check out all the models of hand grinders that they make. Thank you again to King Grinder for sending me this. And uh, yeah, take care. Hope you have an awesome day, and we'll see you on the next video.